This week I'm in Edinburgh, Scotland and I'm trying to get home for the weekend. Now my choices are to drive, which is about five and a half hours to Birmingham. I could catch a train, which is again four or five hours. Or of course I could jump on board a flight. I'm traveling with Flybee today on the Q400 from Edinburgh to Birmingham. Welcome to Blake Edgington Airborne. Let's get going. You'll find the check-in area of Edinburgh Airport on the ground floor with the Flybe desks a little less obvious than some of their neighbours. As I had no luggage today, I used a self-service machine to grab my boarding pass, then headed straight upstairs to departures. Edinburgh Airport has the usual selection of shops found in many UK terminals, but I was pleased that you could also purchase some Scottish products before heading home. There was also a store selling items from Harry Potter, which is pretty appropriate as many locations in the books were inspired by Edinburgh. Depending on the time of day, you may also like to grab something to eat or drink pre-flight, and there's a very good choice in Edinburgh Airport. So that's Edinburgh Airport after that quick tour around the terminal. It's certainly not my favourite in the world, but it does have a good selection of shops and restaurants for departing passengers. Let's go and find the aircraft and head to Birmingham. Flybe was established in 1979 as Jersey European Airways and has a special place in my heart as some of you may know as I worked for the airline for several years. I spent much of my time on board the Q400 and the airline is the world's largest operator of the aircraft with 54 in their fleet. After some worrying times recently, the airline's future has now been secured by Connect Airways and Flybe will continue to operate under the Virgin brand in future. Flybe operate a regional network and offer flights to 14 destinations from Edinburgh with a number of departures to Birmingham daily. Prices are advertised from as little as £29.99 depending on date of travel, but they do vary significantly and I paid substantially more although I did book just a few days in advance. If your Flybe flight is on board the Q400, you'll find 78 seats laid out in a 2-2 configuration. The cabin is bright and has a modern feel, and as I mentioned in my TAP Express review, I prefer this aircraft to the ATR-72. As nice as the cabin looks overall, this aircraft was not in the nicest of conditions. The tray table next to me was pretty dirty, and I had no intention of touching the air vents. The toilet had also seen better days, and there were no tissues or paper towels provided. Although the cabin cleanliness was disappointing, I was pleased with the offering in the Café Flybe menu. 
the selection of snacks and drinks is quite impressive and prices are pretty reasonable with deals available depending on the items purchased. I went for a quick sugar fix and something to take the edge off a long day. When travelling on a Just Fly basic fare as I was on this trip, seats can be selected when booking for a fee. All seats on board are the same design, but a little extra space can be had if you select one of four emergency exit seats, although the difference in price is pretty steep. Like in my recent EasyJet review, Flybe used a space at the top of the seat to advertise their partners, which I guess is pretty helpful if you forgot to book on with transport. As I mentioned earlier, this aircraft really could do with a clean, and I'm hoping that these marks on the seat were dried milk. As I opened the tray table, I was also treated to some artwork on the back of the seat in front from a previous passenger. The tray table itself is not adjustable, and while it's not the biggest I've seen, it does provide ample space for items purchased on board, and features, as expected, a small indentation for a drink. Flybe do provide a literature pocket on the Q400, which is a little tight, but contains everything you need for your journey, including the safety card, cafe Flybe menu, in-flight magazine, and yes, some more mysterious stains. A nice surprise of the seat though was the legroom, which in my opinion was very generous. And here's a better look at the surprisingly spacious Flybe Q400 seats. A good way to pass the time during a flight is to check out the in-flight magazine. Flybe's flight time is a decent read and I quite enjoyed the fleet information and an interview of a pilot. There is also a useful guide to the destinations that Flybe serve and in this particular issue information of one of Birmingham's top restaurants. Before we arrive in Birmingham I just wanted to let you know that not only can you follow my journeys here on YouTube but also keep up to date with my flights as they happen via my social media accounts. So we're in the descent now towards Birmingham, don't forget to stick around at the end of the video for my final thoughts on today's trip, but for now, enjoy the views. I hope you're enjoying your flight with us so far today. Thank you very much for choosing to fly with Flybe, and we look forward to working with you on board again with us very soon. Thank you. So that's it, welcome to Birmingham Airport after that trip with Fly B. This is the part of the video where I'll share with you my final thoughts on today's experience and we'll get started in Edinburgh Airport. Now Edinburgh Airport, as I said earlier in the video, it's not my favourite terminal I travel through. It's not bad by any means, but it does get very congested in there, particularly the past two trips I've had through, really crowded in the main departures area, so that's something to bear in mind. 
One thing I'd also like to point out is Flybe have had their baggage restrictions in place for a long time regarding cabin baggage, and that's in part because the Q400 doesn't have a lot of space in the cabin, the lockers are quite narrow. Except it's never really been enforced, and it's come up quite a lot on social media recently with disgruntled passengers all of a sudden being charged by Flybe, and they haven't before. Well, I saw that today, and the baggage sizer was quite interesting. It was a general size baggage sizer, except there's a box in it. And that meant that a lot of people's cases that would have fit in any other baggage size that didn't fit and they were being charged at the gate, which led to quite a few unhappy passengers. Something to bear in mind. The flight itself, well, the views were fantastic today, as I'm sure you'll agree. Some beautiful views as we departed Edinburgh and made our way south to Birmingham. One thing less beautiful, though, was the cabin. It was really dirty really not nice at all in some places and add to that the fact that the windows are quite heavily scratched the aircraft just felt really tired one thing i didn't show uh, because it's not something you want to see in a video but the toilet itself didn't flush either so it wasn't very nice in the cabin the crew themselves they were very professional very efficient and they were quite welcoming on board as well and one other negative I'd have to say though is the price of this flight. Now as you saw when this part of the video popped up, it was really expensive for an hour trip. Now that may be in part because I didn't book particularly early and also because Flybe have a monopoly on the route, but over £130 for a quick one hour flight seems like a lot of money to me. But would that put me off flying with Flybe? Absolutely not, in part because of my previous history of the airline and also because they do offer routes that many other airlines don't, particularly from here in Birmingham. I do hope you've enjoyed this video today. Please do leave me some feedback in the comments section whether you think I'm right or wrong in my opinions. And also do hit that thumbs up button, give me a like, and if you haven't already, do please subscribe to the channel because only with your support can it continue to grow. Most of all, take care.